I'm a councillor at Islington Council. This is a true unity meeting. This is about all of us, killed, injured, or just simply thrown from their homes. These are shocking images. It's absolutely clear that even though this is happening so many thousand miles away, what we do here, the decisions we make, have such an impact right across the world. Isn't it terrible to know that the weapons that are killing those people in Gaza, isn't it shocking to know that they were made, some of the parts were made here on British, mm. British soil? Great. responsibilities here. We can all be spectators, but what you've demonstrated here and in your campaigns up and down this up and down this country, you've demonstrated that you're more than spectators, you're ready to act. This meeting brings us all together. There are no divides here. All political parties, all communities here together because we stand united. I'm delighted to see so many of you here. I'm even more delighted that the Finsbury Park Mosque has opened its doors to us here today. Yeah. Now our thanks go to the mosque for hosting and promoting today's event. How can it be so that the HSBC Bank Describe this organization as not worthy, as not worthy to bank with it. How can that be so? This is not an organization. Uh, hello, I'm from Haringey Justice for Palestinians. I'd just like to ask when are we going to pressure the British government to prosecute British Israelis who are fighting in the IDF? When are we going to prosecute people that fight on occupied land? and break international law. If a Muslim goes to fight in Syria, automatically he is a criminal in this state. When will we have justice? Thank you. Thank you for um, what I've been listening to. Um, the question I would like to ask is, I agree with what everybody is saying, I don't have much to add, but I want to find out how can the Palestinians be protected from this near genocidal onslaught by the Israeli military and their financial and military backers in the West. It's been noted as decades of oppression by the Zionist ruling class. Uh, my question really to, to any of the speakers is, I don't think this has really been touched at all, is do you think this problem can be ever solved on a capitalist basis? Because uh, the Zionist state, in my opinion, I don't think has any interest in peace uh, or the, the creation of any kind of secure, independent uh, homeland for the Palestinian people. Uh, it's, it's just using this conflict in a cynical way to cut across the class struggle in its own country where there's, uh, there's also large unemployment, there's, there's also large poverty, there's also a housing crisis and it's trying to say, you know, we're not your enemy, it's the Palestinians, you know, don't struggle against us but, you know, you know that struggle against them, which is completely false. I think we should stand against this. We must approach this on a class question for the unity of the Palestinian and the Israeli workers for a socialist federation of the Middle East with a, on, a, on a voluntary basis 
So again, my question is, without removing the capitalists, the bankers, the landlords, and the imperialists, how can, they, how can you ever really talk about peace, uh, the end of poverty, you know, the end of unemployment, end of exploitation, not just in uh, Israel and Palestine, but across the world? Thank you. Uh, this is just a, a quick suggestion about how we can multiply. When we have an election, we put up posters in our windows saying, vote for this or that party. Why don't we put up posters in our windows with a Palestinian flag on them and across that flag we can write some slogans. We can write boycott Israeli goods, we can write sanctions against Israel, we can write arms embargo now. And wouldn't it be lovely uh, if the Palestine Solidarity Campaign put such a flag with the appropriate slogans on its website for anyone with their home printer to print out and put up. Thank you. I'm sure at London Metropolitan University and I'm the University and College Union Equalities Officer for the London Region and I'm a member of the Islington Socialist Workers' Party and I want to talk about the boycott, disinvestment and sanctions campaign really because I think it is absolutely critical because the, the demonstrations are massively important and uh, uh, but, but the, what, what, what Israel is doing in Palestine will carry on after the current, uh, 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 after the current uh, uh, d disgusting uh, uh, events are, are over and done with. And we actually, what we need to do is not only stop what's going on at the moment, but we need to free Palestine. And that's a longer term project, really. And I think in terms of boycott, disinvestment and sanctions, as well as boycotting those companies, something we can all do, I think, actually, at London Metropolitan University, what we'll be doing is we'll be arguing that the university immediately breaks all links with Israeli academic institutions. But more than that, actually, what I want to see at London Metropolitan University, I want to see the university guarantee that it will not purchase goods or services from any organisation or company that has any links with Israel at all. And I think that's something we need to roll out right across the country. I mean, in, in Islington, for instance, it's something that the council can do. The council should not only break all links with, I'm sure it doesn't have any at the moment, with Israel, but should ensure that companies it purchases services from, and it purchases lots of services from lots of companies, none of them have any links with Israel. And I think that we all have a role to play in ensuring that that happens. I think we should set up a specific BDS campaign in Islington. I don't think we can wait. Actually, I would like to see us have a meeting next week at some point, maybe 7 o'clock. Perhaps, as there are two councillors here, we could have it in the town hall. So I'm proposing that we have an activist meeting next Tuesday, 7 o'clock, in the town hall, maybe somebody's got a better time at a different place, but let's hear it. But let's not just go away from here, just go into the demonstration and then wondering what we're going to do next. Let's get together after this meeting to make sure that all the institutions that we have anything to do with actually break their links with Israel immediately. Uh, I spoke with Gaza this uh, afternoon and the nurse I spoke with, her son was killed by the massacre on last Friday which was effectively authorized by the UN, the British government, the American government and other governments. I hold them accountable for that genocide that is happening in Gaza and in particular the massacre in Rafah last Friday. She said many people are still buried on, under the rubble. They have no idea how many people actually been killed last Friday. Um, but other things they, they told me from Rafa is that they know that Israel plans to ethnic cleanse them into Sinai. So opening the Rafa border, we want the Rafa border to be open for them to travel. But during bombardment, Israel will use it to ethnic cleanse, to transfer them into Gaza. I just want to add a couple of things. There's something, there's something we can do here. There's plenty of people here who can actually do it. And that is ensure that no MP, especially not from Islington, is still a member of Friends of Israel. There should be no, member, no friendship with Israel. Israel always plan is to ethnic cleanse the Palestinian. Have no mistake. We have, all of us can do that. We can get, stop Emily Thornberry MP to 
be a member of Friends of Israel. That should not be acceptable. And we should all do BDS. Really important. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I'm standing up because I'm an Israeli and an anti-Zionist. And although I'm not in Israel demonstrating, I've been in the demonstrations here. And when I, when I shout free Palestine, I mean the whole of Palestine. The Palestine that my parents as Jews were born into and grew up in peace with other communities, with, with the Palestinian communities. But I also want to have a word, to say a word for Palestinian Israelis that, are, that live in an apartheid state where they are um, uh, discriminated against. There is a, uh, the foreign minister at the moment is called someone called Lieberman, who is a Russian gangster, and he wants all the Arabs transferred, all the Palestinian Israelis transferred. Basically, he wants them to have uh, an allegiance. And if they, they don't want to serve in the army and they don't stand and have an allegiance for Israel, then he wants them their passports, the Israeli passports, taken away. So this is really urgent to look at the whole issue of a Zionist state and do away with it. Thank you. What can we do? Is writing to MPs any good? Or if it's something that David Cameron can only do? I mean, what can we do? The other thing is that there is um, an email um, for Downing Street. So although we've all signed lots of letters, we can send a quick um, message um, via the Downing Street email um, just saying immediate embargo, recall Parliament, or whatever you want. But it can be done almost like an extended tweet. Um, I can't tell you offhand. You just go email... Google it, Google it, okay, it's there, okay, you'll find okay, it. Okay. But do that Thank as you. well. We, we must inundate them all with everything. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia, for exposing me in the corner and bringing me up to the front. I've, I've been going around London this week, seeing the reaction of Londoners. Uh, I've been to Hayes and I've seen the protest there, um, by, uh, coordinated by John MacDonald, where all the shops have come out and said they're not going to be selling Israeli goods. I've been to Camden. I've seen young boys produce T-shirts for the first time engaged in the political process. Uh, and I've seen people on the edge of the road near me talking about it day and night. I'd like to think I'm an assembly member that represents those sentiments amongst Londoners and doesn't just deal with London affairs. As James has said, I think it's very important for us sometimes to come out of our box and deal with the issues as and when they are presented to us. And in a way, the Assembly never did when we had the Iraq War. Now, I have a personal perspective on this. I actually remember being bombed once in my life uh, in the Bangladesh Liberation War. Uh, but I had an option then, um, me and my family, we could flee into India. What I've seen over the last few weeks in uh, Gaza uh, clearly shows that option has not been available to the Palestinians because the uh, uh, point at Rafa crossing is firmly closed by the Egyptian army. And I think it's shameful that the Egyptians have done that. I know Egyptian people here in, uh, in London uh, are, 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 are deeply embarrassed by that. And I think it shows, actually, the Palestinians can't depend on a lot of Arab regimes. What they must depend on is public opinion, because world leaders have also failed them. And public opinion is us, and uh, us in this room, around the world, making sure our views are clear. Those views uh, are a reflection of what's happened in, in uh, the past few weeks. We've heard about the, the massive civilian casualties, particularly to kids. I myself was out there about a month ago, um, and I saw the hassle boys, young boys got in Hebron. Um, they, they are frequently detained and shot at by the Israeli army. So I, have, uh, so I, didn't, I, I, I did expect them to attack uh, civilians in the way that they have, and most of this action in recent time has been based on a whole pack of lies. It's a political strategy, it's not a military... As, as a mili it's a military strategy based on a political strategy. They don't want to see the Palestinians united uh, as uh, Hamas and Fatah together across Gaza and the West Bank. That's the ultimate goal. Uh, that's the motive behind Netanyahu's push uh, into the Gaza. And, and we've had that more recently shown last weekend. 
uh, when, when he suggested that uh, there was a, um, a soldier held captive. Well, that was proven wrong within 24 hours. Um, that they had to admit themselves, they, he had actually died in action as Hamas had suggested. In the meantime, another 150 Palestinians were killed. We, we, we've heard this time and time again, and it's indefensible that the BBC and other national yeah, yeah, news yeah. agents have been actually replicating this propaganda. I know um, what we, standards we expect in, uh, out of our media, and they should be adhered to here as, as much as anywhere else. And the final point I would like to make has to be said, you know, Britain has been complicit right from the outset in the, um, in the Palestinian plight. 1948, when we had the mandate, we allowed the land... Sorry, I've got the year wrong. Is it 47? No, it's sorry, 48. Sorry, OK. Uh, history was never my strong point. Um, but the land was stolen from them. They were ethnically cleansed um, in many parts of uh, Palestine. Uh, more recently, it's actually been col uh, col British colonial laws, which has been used to uh, ad administratively detain a lot of uh, Palestinian political uh, representatives. Uh, and finally, we've been arming them to the hilt, uh, along with the Americans. I think we've got a special responsibility in Britain to make sure the Palestinian cause is well represented, and I know you'll do that on Saturday and make sure there's a clear message, not just to the coalition government, but right across the political spectrum, we expect a major change in perspective from today. Thank you very much. Um, you see there's loads of apps and things around about the whole list of targets. The approach that we've taken though is trying to discuss with our Palestinian and other campaign partners here who the key targets are. The sort of phraseology we've used is let's jump together. The really effective campaigns have been like G4S or SodaStream where we've targeted the same firms at the same time. There will be new ones we've suggested Garnier. So yes let's have all the suggestions but also we want to have agreement about what the targets are so we can have maximum effect on those targets at any one time. But then there is local action, as we heard in Hayes and Arlington, and things that can do. The other one I just wanted to comment on, and it's really good that you raised the point about the uh, Palestinians within Israel, the 1.2 million people who are there, who are uh, Palestinian. Uh, we are an avowedly anti-racist campaign, as all new organisations are, and one of the reasons for that is, yes, that's what we believe, but Israel is fundamentally racist in everything it does. Uh, and we need to make sure we can expose that, the apartheid wall they're building, the way they discriminate against the Palestinians within Israel, the ethnic cleansing. It is their Achilles heel, and we need to make sure that we're challenging them on their racism, and that we're making sure that we're fighting an anti-racist campaign. Okay, thanks for a couple of those. I mean, I agree very much with Fiona's point about how great it is the diversity in this meeting and I think that's exactly what any movement around this question should be about and it's about welcoming everybody who agrees around these issues rather than trying to divide us and set up different campaigns. I think that's absolutely great. Um, and I agree very much about the IDF people, the people who go to fight. I mean, it's incredible. You have all this stuff. There's 500 people fighting in Syria. Maybe that's true. Maybe it isn't. But they may be terrorists when they come back. But there are at least 100 British citizens fighting in the, or in the IDF in, uh, in Israel. And nobody even suggests there's a problem with that or that they, they're going to be terrorists when they come back after uh, the experience of being, uh, being in Gaza. But just on the, the, uh, the question the last speaker asked, because, I mean, that's such a big question, I suppose. We could start the meeting all over again if we didn't have to go home at some point. But just to say this, that, you know, how can the Palestinians be protected against this Israeli onslaught? The tragedy is it's a long thing, and, we've been, and they've been doing it for even longer. I think it's two things. I think it's the Palestinians themselves standing up for themselves, which they've done with great heroism and great courage for decades now. And, that, and none of this, we wouldn't be doing this if they hadn't done that repeatedly and said they are not going to put up with it. Not just with the present campaigns, but the Intifadas and all the different things going back, Leila Khaled and all the different people going back a long, long time. The other thing is that we build a solidarity movement and that we build a mass movement in support of the Palestinians. And I think we've actually done that incredibly well in Britain. I mean, we have many faults, no doubt, and we want to do a lot better than we're doing. But 
If you look at the demonstrations, they're some of the biggest in the world. They are very diverse. We have managed to build on all the different campaigns that we've done, the anti-war, PSC, all the different things, Stop the War, to build a campaign which really is about solidarity. And that is so important because they cannot rely on a single government, or virtually that's not quite true, actually. Some of the governments in Latin America have withdrawn their ambassadors and, and done things like that, which is very... Uh, I'm just a humble, ordinary guy. Thinking from, from behind there, from there, and listening to everybody's light, conscious people. I was thinking, I'd like to share with you what I'm thinking. The old church and all mosque and all synagogue, it should be a portion for all faith, a corner. Come together and pray. This is my way of thinking. Anyway. Good idea. In history, Lot of war been happened and lot of people been killed indiscriminately. And I wish and I pray that this Palestinian issue do not lead to the another world war. I wish not happen this thing. Because previous two world war, we lost a lot of good human beings. We should condemn all the wars. And wars always lead to another wars. Yep. And I salute today to see all background, all religious background is here and sharing and talking and listening positive things. So we stand for positive things and do positive things. Otherwise, history will jump. A number, uh, uh, a mobile number to which you can text Gaza, whatever, and tell you what to say. And you've registered that your one more name, you know, your opposition, your phone number, your email, both in a petition and where you stand on the issue. So, in terms of these, you know, we are we are very fortunate, we are very honoured to have a position where we can stand up and we can speak to people and we can speak to people on doors and at public events. And we have a responsibility to represent you by using our position to multiply that that for, that, that for the ideas about what we should do. As so many speakers have said today, so let's speak after this. We're there with you. We want to fight this alongside you, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Um, just a couple of points I want to make. The first is the somebody raised the question of the world wars and what terrible tragedies those were in terms of the loss of life and so on. And I think we should also see them as times, particularly um, after the First World War, where they drew, redrew the well, after both wars, they redrew the boundaries of the uh, of whole parts of the world, including the Middle East, and it was done for the benefit of the imperial powers. That is absolutely clear in both cases that they uh, they did it like that. Now, I think there is another redrawing of the Middle East going, the boundaries going on, which is not necessarily for the good. If you look at what is happening in uh, in Iraq and elsewhere, and I think we are now in a situation of very very great flux in some of these areas. I think there is more chance of serious wars than we have seen for decades going on. I think this is, you know, this is a consequence of the hideous war on terror, which has created all sorts of the problems that we're now talking about, and which has been a byproduct of that, has been the way that Israel has been allowed to carry on its repression of the Palestinians with, uh, with as somebody said, so little sanction. You know, it's very interesting. Israel always says, you know, no other country in the world will put up with being attacked by rockets and so on and would defend itself. Actually, no other country in the world gets the kind of treatment that Israel gets from the United States in terms of favorable trade agreements, arms, subsidies to the tune of $3 billion a year, all those kind of things. So these are the sorts of questions which are very, very big questions and which we are now, I think, entering an era where there are very, very big big things at stake. And, and as I say, it isn't all necessarily going in a direction that I think those of us who want peace and equality can really say is a good direction. What can change that is the action of people themselves in the countries most affected and also what we can do in Britain and other countries that are responsible for so much of what has gone wrong in those countries. That's why it's very, very important we demonstrate on Saturday. I hope that people will get involved in all these campaigns, in Stop the War, in PSC, in all the different campaigns, but also that we will um, continue campaigning. NATO has a summit in South Wales. I know it's a long way from Finsbury Park, but you know we're going to have coaches going to the summit at the end of this month to protest about the NATO policies, to protest, and this will be about Palestine. We're going to link 
the question of Palestine to all these other questions, so if you can come to that. But the most important thing is that we keep campaigning, we keep having meetings like this, we keep making more and more people aware of the truth of what is going on, but also that we have the possibility of changing things, that we can organise, we can campaign. And you often don't win, and you often don't think you're ever going to win. And this is surely a way that lots of us have felt at different times over the things, but things do change, and they change as a result of people keeping campaigning until they succeed. And this is the lesson I think we have today, is what we owe the Palestinians, we also owe it to ourselves, because we owe it to our children and grandchildren to have a better, a more equal, and a more fair society. And that's what we're fighting for as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And most of the questions weren't questions, they were comments or suggestions and ideas. I just want to comment on a few of them. On the BDS, what we want everyone to do is to map your local area and find out where your best target is. There's going to be something in your area where you can raise the issue. And on the 16th of this month, we're having a day of local action. And we want as many towns and areas of the country as possible to have action on that day. And there was about 50, 60 demonstrations the last time we did this. That can be replicated and increased the more we do it. So make sure you talk to local groups, other groups, work out what your best action is, and make sure you do something uh, on the 16th of August. People asked about uh, the map, uh, the flag. Those of you on social media might have noticed that we projected a good flag onto the Houses of Parliament, uh, which was the best it's ever looked, uh, with the Palestinian flag on there. We're going to be making that artwork available. It's going to be there for the lobby and also for the campaign in the general election, because we think we need to make Palestine a general election issue. Which way are all of the candidates and the parties going to vote on Palestine? And we should be making sure we make that vote count for Palestine in the general election as well. So make sure you're there on the lobby as well. But the question about how do we protect the Palestinians, when you go there and speak to the Palestinians, they say, it's nice to see you, we like the solidarity, but it's what you do in your country that really makes the difference. It's our government that's our responsibility. It's them that we've got to change and make sure they do things. And if you notice uh, that we're going past the US Embassy uh, on the demonstration uh, on Saturday, and it was appalling, wasn't it? The Israeli runs out of, uh, Israel runs out of ammunition, and the US go, oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, have some more to go off and kill some more uh, innocent uh, civilians and children. It's that sort of support from the US uh, and the UK government we need to end. And there's a question about the BBC. And their coverage was appalling in the first instance. And people respond. Over 40,000 people wrote in three days to the BBC. Uh, and there is a complaints procedure on the PSC website called Fair News to challenge them and make sure. And again, you might have noticed the demonstration is starting outside of the BBC on Saturday. So uh, we'll be able to make an odd chant or two there. And I'd just like to just conclude in, in, in a way of just sort of saying... Maybe a little bit of practice. There's an odd chant that we take place uh, at the uh, demonstrations which goes, Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. Free, free. Palestine. Thank you.